What's up everyone, it's Be The Installer. I'm here at the end of 2023 and we have to go over the best TVs of the year, the ones that I've actually reviewed. I'm gonna run through in order and show you guys, based on tier systems, which TVs I really liked, which ones I didn't love as much, and what I'm excited for in 2024 at CES and beyond. And the TVs get better and better as we go, so stick around to the end so you can see really the, the ones that I just got, just reviewed, just installed, because those are the most exciting. So we'll go through this. If you guys have any comments or questions, make sure to ask them below and there'll be some links in the description. If you guys are purchasing TVs, feel free to use those links. It helps the channel, of course. Make sure to smash and like and all that and I appreciate that. So we're gonna go through this tier system. It's gonna be S, A, B, C, D. Obviously S is top tier, um, then A, B, C, and D. And I'm gonna go over all these in order of when I reviewed them. So we're gonna start out with the S95C, the Samsung QD OLED. And obviously this is a really great TV. And I would have to say that I would put this up here in the top S tier because it is a fabulous brand new QD OLED, second generation. I got this in the house and I got it first. And I think that's really why some of the other Samsungs, especially the QLED TVs didn't blow my mind probably is because this S95C that I saw at CES was so amazing. I thought it was one of the brightest looking, coolest looking TVs. The technology is obviously great. The regular OLED TVs with the MLA technology can compete with this, but if they don't, then obviously this is gonna be a lot brighter and it's very beautiful, fantastic color as I said. So really big fan of the S95C. It has a great form factor. It's great on the wall. It has the one connect box, all these things that make it just really top tier, no question about this. So that was one that's pretty easy for me to start at. And because Samsung then gets all all their TVs out so early it seems in the year, the next TV that I got was actually the QN90C, which typically is the top QLED from Samsung in the US. But this year they made some changes. Instead of being a VA panel, it was an ADS panel, which can be good and bad. I mean, if, you know, there's some benefits with regards to its viewing angles that make it better. Um, I felt that the dimming zone algorithm or just the dimming zones in general wasn't as good this year as it was last year. So for me, I felt like the QN90C was a bit of a step back. So it was not my favorite TV of the year. And so therefore, I'd still have to put it in the B tier here. I think it's, you know, solid um, and price point does come into factor here. It was relatively expensive, even though it wasn't the top QLED that they offer. They have one higher, which I'll talk to you in a second. But for me, if I'm gonna get this or I'm gonna get an OLED TV, I'm probably gonna get the OLED because this specific one I wasn't the hugest fan on, even though still good quality, not gonna lie, Samsung's great. But you know, no, Dolby Vision is one thing that people complain about sometimes, and then also the Tizen operating system. Not my favorite, but for the most part, gets it done. And then after that, I got the LG C3, the 83 inch here. And for me, it's interesting because this is year over year, fantastic improvement. And I always say that I really like it. Now, the 83 inch is not always the exact same as the 77 inch and below. And in this year, this still had the middle pedestal stand, which I really like actually, but this does not have the MLA technology. So it is a more mainstream OLED TV. But for me, it's definitely still gonna go in the A tier. I think price point in general and quality, you're, you're not going to beat the LG C3, you know, probably by a lot of TVs. There's a couple that I would consider on the same level, which we'll get to, but for the most part, consistency, improvements, they're working on making sure that you don't get burned in by having some pixel shifting technology. You also have improved brightness. I believe this is an Evo panel this year. So it's like getting all the benefits of the top OLED TVs. The only thing that I'd be interested in having in this C-Series for 2024 would be MLA technology. If you could get this mainstream OLED to be up above a thousand nits, you know, if you're in the 1200 range or whatever, similar to the G3, uh, maybe not quite as good, but still up there, I think that this would be even more popular. And it's probably something that they're looking to do in 2024. Maybe not MLA technology, but at least the year over year improvements that LG has done with these OLED TVs. So a big fan. Uh, and I think it just keeps getting better. And, you know, 10 years of quality OLED TVs can't be really overstated. Then the next TV we got in here was the QN95C from Samsung. And now this is the one where I was like, okay, this is what I expect from Samsung. I'm gonna put this up on the A tier because basically I felt like the QN95C was what I would expect from a Samsung. I felt like it was very bright. 
It had very good control of the dimming zones and algorithm. And I just liked it. It did not have the one connect box, which is a little disappointing because I think if you want to hide all the wires, it's a lot easier just to have the one wire go up from the one connect box to the TV from the installation side, which is what I'm known for. Definitely can be the case. I know that in US, a lot of people mount the TVs on the wall and it's not code compliant to have that cord in the wall. So could be a consideration on why they decided not to use it this year or just could have been to save some money. It does seem like Samsung was interested in trying to find ways to make these a little bit more affordable. But you guys let me know in the comments, was it a disappointment that they took away the One Connect box? I'm interested to hear. But obviously great mini LED. I think this is the third year of mini LEDs for Samsung. So I think this is, you know, if not top, top tier, this is second tier here, as we can see the A tier. And it's just kind of interesting to see where Samsung's going to go, whether it's QLED or QD OLED, OLED TV. So kind of interesting. And then a little later in the spring, I was able to go up to Sony to check out some of their TV lineups. And I have to say that I was pretty impressed with their X93L. And this is the second mini LED that they've had. And so they had the X95K last year. And then this year, they have the X95L and the 93L. And to be honest, I don't think there's a ton of difference between them, but the X95L only came in 85 inch and I just didn't get an opportunity to review it. Although I know a lot of people enjoyed it. So definitely would consider that at the 85 inch, but the X93L was very impressive as well. I would say because of of the quality and because of the price point that I would put it on this B tier just because of the price point. It's a little bit higher than I think it should be. Sony typically doesn't discount things as much. Sometimes you'll get some good discounts. And most of the time, I think that the products are typically worth it, but you do pay a little bit of a premium, a little bit of a Sony tax on some of them. This X93L, pretty awesome. It's a mini LED. They've increased and improved their dimming zones and algorithm. However, there was still some blooming. Um, obviously, they're really good with regards to anti-reflective capabilities and processing and upscaling and all that. So it's very good. And I would have to say, you know, I don't know if I can rank these differently, but you know, it makes me want to put it on the other side of this QN90C because I liked it better than that, but I maybe didn't like it quite as good as the QN95C or the C3 just because I prefer OLED TV. So I probably could put the X93 up here on the A level and maybe that's where I should put it, but I, I have a couple more that I have to do and I know this is going to get filled. So I don't know, A or B, let's leave it up in A for now and we'll, we'll consider that in a minute. Now the S90C OLED from Samsung. This is also QD OLED, and this is their more mainstream version. Now, I really like this TV. There was some issues with regards to the low bandwidth content. I was having a little bit of an issue with the internal apps. This is something that happened last year and this year with these QD OLEDs from Samsung. For some reason, I can't get the motion on them to be perfect. It's just one gripe that I have. However, most people don't have this. If you have a third-party device, we were able to connect an Apple TV to it and had no issues with that. So some little bug inside that I don't think I should be able to to downgrade this as much as I was thinking at first. And so for me, it's a clear winner to put it up on here. I obviously would put it right here on the A tier on the left side as my first A tier TV because I've, I've said in my videos and I've made a couple best of videos that this is a really good QD OLED, very bright, very colorful. And besides that issue I had, it you know it's probably better than this LG. The only thing this gets downgraded on a little bit is that uh, low bandwidth upscaling, but for the most part, better uniformity, better brightness, all kinds of positives, great gaming, 4K 120 times four HDMI ports. So it's a very good QD OLED and I I got this early on and got a lot of the Samsungs out of the way, which, you know, again, you don't see anything lower than a B, so that's not too bad. So after that Samsung, then I got into doing some cool installations, which we're going to try to be doing more in 2024. So look for that in the upcoming year. But we got to see the LG G3 that again, I got to see at CES and was so bright. I think that Samsung S95C and this LG G3 were the two most beautiful TVs I saw at CES with regards to like what's coming out in 2023. And so this LG G3 goes right up here next to the Samsung S95C. And you know, we'll talk about which one is in order on this top level in a second, but the LG G3 looks so amazing. It's the TV to have on the wall if you're gonna put one up there. And any downsides in 2022 with the G2 with like the pink tint or some uniformity issues, seems to be all cleared up. The MLA technology has been added to it, so it's much brighter than it was last year. And so for me, I thought this was the coolest looking TV I'd seen all year to date. And we had a good time installing at the client's house. They really loved it and it actually prompted me to get an LG G377 inch for our game room, which is absolutely amazing. So big time win for LG in 2023. And obviously this is awesome. And I have one more LG 
in a bit that I'll show you, but give me one more second. Then next we had the 98 inch Sony X90L, which was something that I was really excited for in 2023 because it's Sony's first massive TV like this. Well, actually, they had one that was 100 inch, I think a year or two ago, but that needed to be professionally installed. It was absolutely heavy as can be. And so this was actually one that was a little bit easier to just take to someone's house, set it up. And I thought this was a great opportunity for me to check this out. And Sony was nice enough to lend me one for that purpose. Now, the good thing is that it was up to the Sony standards. The X90 series is always pretty good. This was actually a little above that. I thought it had better anti-reflective capabilities. And overall, it was right up there. It was not mini LED, but it was still really good. However, I had something like the TCL R754 last year, and I thought in the comparison video that they were very similar. So while it's very good, and I think a lot of people bought it, I still think that the performance for the price point, especially that it's still around seven or eight thousand dollars, it's a little bit harder to swallow because there's a couple other ones that we can talk about in a second that have come along that are significantly less. So for me, the quality of this TV is definitely in that B series. The price point's a little lower, but I'm gonna have to stick it up here in this B area right now. As you can see, I haven't really gotten anything down there, but we'll order these real quick at the end and kind of give you our last thoughts. But this is where I would put the 98 inch X90L. I do think that the X90 series is right in the middle. It's probably a little above uh, middle tier, but then the price point makes it a little bit harder to swallow than some of the alternatives that we typically see. And speaking of one of those alternatives, we got a chance to look at that Hisense U8K. And the U8K is very interesting because I had the 75 inch ADS panel version of that, which I thought was fantastic. Not a lot of people got the 75 inch. A lot of people were saying that the 65 inch was a VA panel and they weren't as impressed with it or they just wanted to know my opinion on the 75 inch. And my opinion is that it's awesome. I thought it was one of the best mini LED TVs I've ever seen. And so for me, it goes up here on that A-list too. And we're gonna have to figure out where to put some of these TVs because we got five up there and we don't have a whole lot more room, but you know, we'll, we'll differentiate these in a second. And this UAK is very similar to that Sony X93L that's next to it and even the QN95C from Samsung next to it as well. Now the benefit from the Hisense is that it's a lot less expensive than either one of those two, which is why it's up there and maybe we should move it to the other side of those two because honestly, it's a great deal. We installed one of these at my buddy's house who was deploying and they really thought it was such a big upgrade from the TV they had before. So uh, I'm a big fan of the U8K and I'm excited for 2024 for Hisense to see what improvements they make this year. So now we have a couple interesting TVs. We have the Q7 from TCL, which I saw at CES and I was excited to see their lineup and they have the nice QM8, which we're gonna talk about in a second. But this Q7 was not a mini LED, but it was an 85 inch TV that was rather inexpensive. So I was pretty impressed at first with regards to the build quality, I guess external build quality anyways, and just size, price, brightness. It's very bright TV. I think it's a thousand nit TV for about $1,200 when it was 85 inch. So that was pretty impressive. And it's 120 hertz panel. It has all the gaming specs that you'd want, 4K at 120 and a couple HDMI ports. And overall, I liked it. Now, there was a bit of a downside in that the screen uniformity wasn't perfect. It did have a little bit of like yellow discoloration around the bottom of the screen that was not very impressive. But overall, for the price point quality and all that, I thought it looked rather good. But for me, this would probably be the first uh, TV that I would put down here and more of the C uh, tier. And this is not just because of the quality, but also it's definitely a mid-range QLED. And, you know, someone's going to spend $1,200 on an 85-inch TV. They're going to want, you know, some quality out of it. And I think they're going to get that with this. But just the, you know, quality control issues. Uh, maybe our panel wasn't as good as the typical panel. But that's what happens when you buy TVs. You can't always get exactly the same as everyone else. And so you have to rate them based on what you experience. Overall, I thought it was really good. But, you know, I have a couple other ones that I'm going to put up here. And so we have to make some decisions based on all the different TVs I've seen over the year, and that's where this TCL Q7 is gonna go in this tier. And then directly after that, I ended up getting the QM8. And I'd have to admit that the QM8 was something I was stoked. Once I saw it at CES, I was like, wow, they're gonna have a 98 inch TV that's gonna be mini LED. It's gonna be way brighter than the one that I had last year. Uh, it's gonna be so revolutionary. Everyone's gonna buy it. And for the most part, it was most of what I thought it was gonna be. 
And there's been a lot of hype around this this year, especially the size, but it's also mini LED, very bright, a lot of dimming zones and, you know, pretty awesome. But if you're gonna put this in your living room, you're probably gonna watch it off angle. It's so big, you're gonna need to see it from all the different areas. And for me, when viewing it from an angle, even just like 30 degrees off angle or 45 degrees off angle, the quality of this picture changes dramatically. So um, that's the only downside is just the fall off off angle. It is a VA panel and I was just a little disappointed that it wasn't so great. When I was watching a movie with my family, I was sitting in the side chair and I was like, I am not getting the same view as them straight on. So for me, you know, I really like this and it's really hard for me to put it below this Sony, but I would probably have to scoot it on this side of the Sony, or maybe not, I'm not sure, because the Sony didn't seem to have that fall off off angle, but the Sony's more expensive, they're both really good. This is a really tough choice, so I'll put it on this side. Both of these 90 inch TVs are awesome, but I you know, I think people know that if you watch my videos, I have one more surprise for you with regards to 90 inch TVs that I'll talk about in a second. After this, I got an opportunity to check out the LG QNED lineup for this year. And last year it was the QNED 85. This year it's the QNED 80 or 81 if you're in the UK. And so I just assume that, you know, if it's a lower number, it's probably not as good as last year's. And that's sort of how I felt when we got this TV. Overall, it's fairly bright and it's a fair Really well balanced TV, but the downside was that the black uniformity was not great. There was kind of light spilling around the edge of it. And also there was a little bit of issues with some of the gray uniformity where, you know, you had a little bit of the dirty screen effect. Um, overall, it wasn't my favorite TV this year and the price point is still relatively high to some of the other ones that we've gotten like the U8K and even the U7K, the Q7. Um, so for me, it was one of the TVs that I would probably put on this C or even possibly on this D tier because of that black uniformity issue that some of these QNED TVs have. I noticed it a little bit on the QNED 85, but it's hard to you know look at a TV and say, when it transitions from one scene to another or from a black screen back to regular screen, uh, if you have a little light around the edge, is that normal, is it not normal? But uh, it's hard to judge and say, okay, I gotta put it in this tier or I, I can't recommend it because it might have a little bit of this transitional light issues or the dirty screen effect because sometimes mine might not be as bad as yours and vice versa. So for me, it's gotta be at least on the C tier or D tier because of just you know how it came out overall. It does have 4K at 120 and gaming ports and all these things, but I just think there's a lot of better value. And if you had to ask me if I would get this QNED or the Q7 or even the U8K, I'd definitely say, get that U8K. If you want a budget one, get the Q7. I mean, there's just a lot of better options. So for me, unfortunately, this is the first TV that I'd put down here in this uh, D tier. And then after that, I got an opportunity to check out the really cool AWOL Vision LTV 3500 Pro. And I think the combination of me having a UST projector that was both very bright and could get up to 150 inches made this one of my favorite things of the year. So I'd have to say, now listen, is it on S tier with regards to just its quality? Um, is there maybe a better UST projector out there? Maybe. And maybe I put it up here on this top tier because it's able to produce an image so large at 150 inch with a pretty sharp picture. And maybe some other people would say, well, no, that's a you know UST projector. It should be down in the A or the B tier, which I understand. Um, so you know maybe I should put it down here in this A tier as well, because these up here are just like technological revolutions as far as TVs. And is that LTV 3500 Pro that, or is it just because it's so big that I think it's that great. And so kind of between S and A would be kind of where I would put this. And maybe just because it's my video, I'll put it up here in the S. But I really enjoyed it. And the funny thing is, is once I got it up to the 150 inch screen, I was set to keep this in my living room. And then they needed the projector back and I got an alternative. And then I was a little upset. And why don't we just go with that alternative? Because listen, I did this video on the Altamia Thor T60. And for the most part, I thought it was really great. And I think it's great when you put it with this 120 inch screen that rises up from the floor. But we also had the projector on the floor and some commented that, you know, it's a temporary setup. So how does it really look? And I thought it looked really good. I still think it's a great product. But once I had that 150 inch screen up from AWOL Vision and then they took that projector back and then I put the Thor Altamia one up there, then I realized it wasn't quite as sharp or as bright as the AWOL that I had. And for me, I thought, you know, it was okay. 
and I would put it here on this B tier. So I think that just means that the AWOL Vision one probably should come down here because it's not as if that Altamia was so bad compared to the AWOL. It's just that the AWOL one was a little bit better. So we'll go like this for now. And again, I thought the Altamia, it still is able to go on a 120 inch pretty easily and looks really good on 120 inch. And then when you go to 150 inch, it loses a little bit of its, you know, clarity or its uh, sharpness, I guess. But overall, I'm pretty impressed with it. And, and for the price points, these are still pretty good, in, especially if you're doing a theater room, uh, if you're able to get one of these pop-up screens and put it in front of a smaller TV for when you have guests over or you're going to watch a movie. I mean, it's something you could do, you could think about it anyways. I'm not sure it's for everyone, but I definitely want to know in the comments what you guys think about these giant TVs versus these giant projectors, because it's a pretty cool kind of debate about how big you should go and whether or not you should go for the brightness of a TV or the size of a projector, or if the projectors are going to get up there in quality, or if the TVs are going to get up there in size. So it continues to evolve. And then after we got this Ultimia one in the house, then finally we got this cool new TCL S5 LED TV at the 98 inch size. Now the S5 98 inch is awesome because it's almost as good as that QM8 and in some ways it might be better. I think the fact that the QM8 has all the dimming zones and then it has to be controlled by the processor and then they have to light them up so fast in scenes. Processing is key. And with regards to this TCL 98 inch S5, it's not as important because there are not dimming zones at all. This is a direct lit TV. And so the contrast cannot be as exact or perfect or you know even as good as the QM8 or other full array local dimming TVs, but it looked amazing. It had fantastic highlights. I didn't really notice the raised black levels. You could see it just a little bit, but for the most part, no one is gonna notice that and they're gonna notice how good this is for the size. And I've had people comment that I really am selling Selling this and they think that maybe I'm overselling it but once they get it they're like yo it is that good it is great for the price it's only around three thousand bucks it might be a little bit more you have to check the price right now but at times it was down to twenty five hundred dollars for a 98 inch TV and I just think that's ridiculous because if you look at this TCL QM8 you're talking about twice that if you're talking about this Sony 98 inch X90L it's three times as expensive as this 98 inch TCL so I would have to say that that puts this possibly up here on the top tier because if we're talking about value, price point, and what you're getting for, 120 hertz panel, two HDMI ports that are 4K 120, you know, this is a little bit ahead of its time. And I think, you know, I'll hint to you that I might have watched a video that might have some cool things coming this year from TCL. Can't really talk about it, but I think that, you know, this S5 is representative of where TCL is going, and I'm a big fan of this 98-inch series. And to be honest, this is the third TCL 90H that I've had, and I was the most impressed with the S5 because of the price point, the highlights that were not being suppressed like some of the other TVs can be with local dimming zones, and just overall quality. So big fan of the S5, and I'm gonna leave it up there on that top tier because it's really good, and it's only 2,500 bucks. So I think you have to let me go there. Now, I did get one portable projector. I'm gonna go over this real quick. I have this N1 Ultra. It's actually what's projecting the image behind me, and it's sitting up here next to me. It's not actually an ultra short throw. And it's sitting about 20 degrees off angle and it's able to turn on and keystone quickly and adjust and put that you know picture behind me up there perfectly square. So I was a big fan of it. It's got cool form factor. It's got really cool speakers. It just looks pretty futuristic. And for me, this was something that I was really stoked about. So if I had to tell you guys to go buy one of these, I'd say get the uh, N1 Ultra from Jamgo. And for me, it's definitely something that I'd put up in this B tier, uh, maybe even higher. But for the price, you know, I think it's around $1,600 to $2,000. You can get a portable projector. So if you're going to watch movies outside or if you want to take it to like an outside screen to maybe back inside, it's just something that you can set up, fire up quickly, watch a movie. Um, obviously, it's expensive with regards to some of the other ones. You could probably just buy on Amazon, but there's no way that they're going to be as bright as this. So it's one of those things where you have to kind of have some experience with this to see like, could you buy a $200 one on Amazon and be happy with it? Probably. Is this one going to be worth the $1,500 to $2,000? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. So that's something for you to determine. And then I got two more TVs to go. Obviously, you can see them up here. But the one that I was waiting on all year was the A95L from Sony. 
I'm a big Sony fan. Uh, I was excited when they told me that they're gonna come out with a 77 inch QD OLED. It was actually Samsung Display that makes those. And so, you know, something like I got the S95C here as the first TV of the year. And technically the A95L from Sony was the last TV I got from the year. And for me, it was like, I didn't wanna overhype it. I know that it had won for uh, best TV on, you know, the TV shootout at Value Electronics, which is a good friend of ours. So if you're looking to buy one of these from a well-respected retailer, I definitely call up Value Electronics over there in New York, but I didn't wanna be overhyping it. I didn't wanna say, oh, it's definitely gonna be the best. I wanted to come in with a blank slate. I got it. I put it up against my 65 inch A90J and I was pretty blown away with regards to the brightness difference that it had over the A90J. Uh, it looked as sharp as it, the A90J because the A90J was already really good as a Master Series OLED. It just wasn't the size that I wanted. And I had tried other TVs in my bedroom as well, but this A95L was finally the one that was gonna stick much brighter, the size difference was fantastic, and the ability to get everything I want out of the Sony ecosystem with regards to using this TV as a center channel for my A7000 soundbar system with Atmos. I mean, it really adds to the movie watching experience. Uh, it sounds like I have like an amazing home theater in my house with just the TV, the soundbar, a couple of rear speakers and a sub. So um, I'm a big fan of it. I might be a little bit partial to the Sony experience because I have all that ecosystem going, but you know, so the same thing can be said if you buy the Samsung uh, S95C, you can get their Q990C, which is awesome soundbar. Got an opportunity to check that out at CES and I thought that was awesome. But for me, this definitely is the top dog um, just because I was able to uh, get everything I wanted out of it, even though it's not letting me put it as top dog. Maybe that's a sign. Uh, all three of these are so good. But I really like the A95L. It is probably my favorite TV that I've seen this year. Maybe the S5 from TCL though, because it's so big. Uh, and then lastly, I have the M3, this wireless OLED 97 inch. Now they had a really cool display up at CES this year. Um, and I'm excited to see what happens this next year at 2024. I, I, I have no idea what companies are planning, but last year blew me away with LG's uh, amazing setup at the front of CES. And I got an opportunity to install this for a client up in LA. And you know, he was going from the wallpaper OLED, the 77 inch up to this 97 inch wireless display. And I Honestly, this thing is so cool. Now, clearly it is the best 97 or 98 inch TV on the planet. There's no question about that. The G2 last year was very similar. This is wireless, so even cooler, right? It doesn't have the MLA technology and it is so expensive, it's out of everyone's price range. I mean, this is like, trying to compare, you know, these other TVs, uh, which would be like a high performance sports car in the $100,000 range with maybe a million dollar Bugatti. Like, can you really compare those? Is anyone really gonna take that seriously? Of course, everyone would have the Bugatti if you just gave it to them, like this M3. However, no one's gonna pay you know, 10 times as much if they can't afford it. So for me, obviously this is really cool, but I don't even know where to put it. Do we put it up in the A, the B, the S, the, I mean, just, just put it somewhere that there's room for it because obviously it's awesome. Let's put it up here. We'll put it on the A tier because it definitely is a top tier. And if it's the best, uh, you know, 97 or 98 inch, we gotta put it up on the top, but it's so expensive that nobody can afford it. So I don't know what to do with it. I'll put it right there. So here's our list. This is how it shakes out. And it looks like it's pretty top heavy, of course. Um, maybe I'm very fortunate for getting really good opportunities to look at all these TVs. And maybe that's a sign that there isn't as much difference as we may think in some of these. Um, obviously you wanna look out for a couple of them that you may not wanna get, or people definitely say they're not a big fan of. But for me, you know, you got some very good ones on this S tier. I do think that this is in order. Let's see. I think probably for me, I'd put this here. So I'd probably go top TV of 2023 is the A95L, then the G3, then the S95C. And I think, you know, the budget option is the S5 from TCL. And then of course, the M3, the technology, the wireless capabilities, it's so cool. It's got to be up here. But realistically, it's, you know, there's not much benefit of putting it anywhere because those people that can afford it will know. Then on this tier, we have the S90C, which is probably my most mainstream liked TV, the C3 from LG, which is awesome. And then we have really good opportunities at mini LED QLEDs. The Hisense is just much better price. And then these are almost a tie, the X93 and the QN95C. We got the AWOL Vision projector. I do like that a little bit better than the Ultimia one, which is why it's down here. Um, then I, you know, as far as these, I'd probably even put this 
QN90C more toward the back. It's almost down here just because the price point and the fact that the uh, S95C right here, or the QN95C right here is even better. So we got a couple really cool uh, 98 inch, the TCL, the X90L, the Ultimia Thor T60, the N1 Ultra from JMGO, and then the QN90C from Samsung. Then we have the Q7 again, which I think is just there because, you know, as we go down in quality, we're, you know, this is what's expected. You got a lot of TVs up here that are better. This is still great. And even the QNED uh, 80 and 81 are still better than most TVs. There'd be so many different ones down here in this range. All the 60 Hertz panels, all the Fire TVs, all the Best Buy exclusive ones would be down here. So I was fortunate to get some really cool ones in 2023. I'm really excited for 2024. I think it's going to be a great year. I'm excited to go to CES. Let me know what you guys want to see at CES. Fire comments down below so I know. And also make sure to hit some links down there. We have the quiz as well. If you want to take a TV quiz to figure out what room conditions and how far you should be viewing things and try to get a handle on what's best for you, take the TV quiz in the description. You'll get a good idea and it'll pop out some TVs that might be right for you. Make sure to smash and like and all that. And we'll see you guys in the next year. Adios.